but you have this particular picture so if you had to bet which of those were hydrocarbons what would you say so we have are you not working now yes you're working now okay so if you said this was one two three four five and six which of these do you think might hit a definition of what's called hydrocarbons so if we think number one hits hydrocarbon, I can see all the heads. You need to put up your thumbs. So my people that have their cameras off, can you turn them on for me, please? Um, and just leave them on. I don't need to see you. I can see your ceiling is fine. So do we think number one is a hydrocarbon? Yes or no? Okay. Number two. So I have my whole middle row. Thank you. Number three. Yes or no? I have a whole bottom row there just looking out the window. Okay, number four. Five. Okay, and six. Alrighty, so hydrocarbons essentially do what they say on the tin. They are a mix of hydrogen and carbon. So any if there's any other element in there, it is no longer classified as a hydrocarbon. So in terms of its definition, it contains hydrogen and carbon only. So oxygen in there doesn't matter. Nitrogen, sulfur doesn't matter. They are not hydrocarbons and they will always be covalently bonded. In organic chemistry, we talk an off. Well, we talk about the main chain. So the main this is a main chain three carbons in your main chain and everything that's attached to it is is what's called is is a is a branch so these are all the the ones that are in the boxes are pretty pretty um simple okay so you have a little piece of blurb on page 159 where do hydrocarbons come from? There are six questions over the page. So see, can you figure out the answers? It's 10.06 now. I'll give you roughly five to see, can you figure it out? So off you go.
Okay, are we happy to give the questions a go? We take silence as a yes. So, difference between how coal and oil is formed? Miles, just keep looking out the window so we'll wake you up. Um, coal is formed from dead wood uh, and oil is formed from the dead matter, the matter of dead plants and animals. Which type though? There's a difference. So they're both formed from dead um, plants, but what's the difference between oil's source of plants? Oils are formed underneath in ancient seas. Yeah, so it's, it's their marine. So coal is dead plants. And even animals and oil is marine plants and animals. Anaerobic, my biologist in the room should know that. Mikey, what do you think? Good. Okay, without ox using oxygen. Yeah, so there's no oxygen present, so you need to have no oxygen. Why is methane a hazard for coal miners, Rachel? Because it's a hazard for coal miners to ingest because of the cause of the Absolutely, that's one. And there is another one that you might not have gotten from it, but I don't even know what the other big issue with methane Bumble. yeah it's it's explosive so two situations where methane presents a hazard where we go matthew what do you think um i didn't get the answer to that question okay anyone help him out so farmers in the room should be able to Pits. Yeah, sorry, pits is one. And in dumps, refuse sites, we're not seeing it as much now, but if you just dump a whole load of organic matter underneath soil, it can end up exploding on you. Why do you think landfill can be used as a source of energy? Any ideas, Hannah? Um, I'll see them, I think it's burned. Yeah, so you can, well, you can you can tap off the gas. So in New Zealand, they're big into, they call it biomass production. We, we're doing it now with our brown bins. So literally they take all of that and they leave it just ferment and it releases methane and then they tap it off. Um, greenhouse effect, Sarah, Talbot. And the warming of the Earth's climate. It is, and do you know how it does that though? Not really. Dropping in the sun's rays. Yeah, so it's the gases in the atmosphere that are going to absorb the, the heat. So methane is, is a greenhouse gas. It's one of the worst ones. So there are some questions that are underneath. How are crude oil and natural gas formed? So if you want to highlight that question in a colour pen, and you can then go back up here and just mark it out for yourself. Now this is really more an FYI. Um, it is more an FYI, so it's never really going to be asked. And then coal is from dead wood from ancient forests that fell into swamps. And you can get methane formation as well. So you can get coal and gas together. Now that's not going to be asked, that's just more an FYI for you. So if you have two different colours, I do not. So this might be one colour. And then this might be a different colour. Nope, it's going to be boxed. And this might be a different colour. Okay, so essentially heat and pressure, right? Aerob anaerobic conditions and you can make coal, oil or gas. Okay, so in terms of today, I think that link is going to come up and we've just done this, we've just done this. So organic chemistry is essentially the, the chemistry of carbon. So we are a carbon-based life form um, and we divide it into different what we call hydrocarbon families. So these two things are related. What's the relationship? Made of carbon. 
true, but what's the relationship between this and this? Cows produce methane. Cows produce methane. So this is methane. It is an organic compound and this is its, its structural formula. So these guys have methane in common. So it is cow belches, essentially. It is a greenhouse gas. So that in itself is a bad thing. We've already talked about the fact that it's found in coal mines and it's explosive. And we use the, the, uh, the fact that methane will go on fire um, in our labs. We've talked about the slurry pits. So that is suffocation. You don't smell methane. You'll smell it for, you don't smell methane. There's no smell to methane. So when you're in a slurry pit, the smell you're smelling are different gases. And unfortunately, those gases block the receptors in your nose very quickly and you stop smelling it, which is why then people have issues in, in slurry pits because they actually smell nothing. So they think it's fine. Um, and we've just done the fact that we can f use it in decomposing waste as a fuel source. Now, because methane is... what's the word we use it in our labs as our bunsen burner gas um, we add a smell to it which is why we can smell gas in our homes you have to um, be able to describe what makes methane um, a good fuel and we'll have some words when we describe this that you will not know just yet because we need to do the thermochemistry part to do it but it fits in here so I'm going to put it in here is the gas you have in your home is that all carbon monoxide is so, that not why I have a carbon monoxide alarm um, well you have a carbon monoxide alarm in case if you're burning your fire and there's just not enough ventilation so if you have what's called incomplete combustion if a fuel burns perfectly it'll burn blue It'll burn and you'll make carbon dioxide and water and that would be fine. If your flu if your flu your fuel burns not doesn't there's not enough oxygen there, it'll burn smoky and you'll make soot and you will make carbon monoxide in that case. So then that's why we now have the detectors in the room because if if you inhale carbon monoxide, it sticks to your hemoglobin in your red blood cells. And the only way to remove it is for um transfusion or weight until your red blood cells renew themselves. Um, but carbon monoxide monitor wouldn't pick up methane. Okay, I'm going off Molly, I think. Mikey, you okay? taken it that we're done so what are the things that make a good fuel in methane's case the fact that it's got a really low molecular mass so it's going to make it into a gas straight away it's got a very high energy content per kilogram of your fuel and added to that it is has got what's called a high heat of combustion so that's just a really posh way that says if i set the gas on fire it's going to give out a bucket load of energy And obviously the hazards include the fact that it's explosive. That is not a good thing. Why doesn't this explode when we light in the lab? It does explode. It goes on fire. But we have a steady stream of it. So where it becomes explosive, explosive would be if, say our safety system stopped working and we have all the windows in the lab closed and Mikey is a messer so he turns on the gas tap for the crack and then somebody comes in and turns on a light switch and the fact that you have so much gas present that's what makes it explosive then. So if the room is filled with it and you have an ignition source that's when you get to see the problems. Okay, the other one that you can add to it is that it is hazardous but explosive is the, the big thing with methane. Okay. So, these guys. 
when we talk about organic compounds, you're either what's called an aliphatic compound or you're an aromatic. So we kind of have to do the words before we start getting into the families. So on your left hand side, you have a gap underneath it. These are aliphatic. These are all on this side over here. These are all what are called straight chain compounds. So to be aliphatic, the criteria you have to hit is you have to be straight. You have to have branched chains and I'll just give you an example of that, um, but we will do it again. So this is what's called a straight chain down here. I don't know if we'll leave, this will leave me change my pen. Well, so this is this is the branch. Now, I'm not going to wreck your heads just yet, but you have to get used to counting what's the main chain. So there's three carbons, at least in this main chain. One carbon here, one carbon here, one carbon here. I could also do my main chain this way. One carbon here, one carbon here, one carbon here. Or I could do it this way, going left to right. But a branch is literally where you have some type of group coming off your um, main chain. The other thing that it talks about is what's called a non-benzene ring. So a non-benzene ring, you would draw something like this. And again, we will come to them. But uh, a benzene ring is really easy to recognize in that it has, it will always be represented like this. This is a benzene ring over here. Benzene. Okay, so it's it benzene ring will always be represented with the circle in the middle because it means something and out here. Okay, and so you're either aliphatic or aromatic and if you're aromatic you have a benzene ring in your structure. So in leaving cert, we do about eight of the hydrocarbon families in total. There's a few that we don't do. Um, and so each of these, so an alkane is, is a family, an alkene is a family, and an alkyne is a family. So they have very specific shapes and arrangements and properties. And if you are in the alkane family, and we're going to start with these guys on Monday, you're in what's called you're in what's called a homologous series, and that's your characteristics for your particular family of compounds. And each homologous series will have the same general formula, and in some cases we call it there there might be a functional group on it. So alcohols have an OH functional group. That. In their homologous series, there are other ones that will have C double bond OH, but they will have the all all members will have the same general formula. They will have similar chemical properties. They will have different physical properties. So when we're talking about our family of compounds, what we're talking about is there may be some the first member might have one carbon in it. The next member might have two carbons in it. The next member will have three and that will go to whatever. I'm not going to say infinity as such, but it will go to, to there. Anyone tell me why in a, in a family of compounds they have different physical properties? 
So this is going back to something we did last year. Are they isotopes? No, no not isotopes. So, so because they won't have the same molecular formula. So an isotope would have same what is it? Same atomic number, different mass number. We now have carbons with that are going to have different numbers of of H's attached, so they're going to have all different molar masses. Anyone else like to give it a go? Why they'll have different physical properties? So they'll have different molar masses is my hint. Different atomic radiuses. They. Will to a degree, yes, but that's not going to determine their physical properties. So remember, we did concentrations of charge in different spots. So what does that have to do with? So you've he's, you've said concentrations of different charges could be in different spots. What does that have to do with? We did at the end of last year. You loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Electronegativity. A little bit to do with that. The bonding, isn't it? Not quite bonding. All right, we'll put you out of your misery. So the reason why they're going to have different physical properties is they will have all different molar masses. And it has a little bit to do with, with what Jim kind of was starting to infer. It has to do with the fact that they will have different intermolecular forces. So can we remember the three intermolecular forces? You've actually got to turn off your microphone, Molly, on as you're talking to yourself. Yes, I was talking to myself to see if I got That's okay, you yeah. talk to yourself. And um, Lucas from the Boom. Boom. Um, yeah. Is it yeah. The one? No, so you've got you've got two of the three. So your IMFs are your weaker Van der Waals. Mm -hmm. And we put the adjective in front of it just ah crapola. We put the adjective in front of it to make the SEC happy. We have the strongest hydrogen bonding and there's one in the middle. What's the one in the middle? Okay, so strong dipole dipole it's called interactions. Okay, so if you're in your homologous series, you will all have different molar masses from the compound that is carbon one to carbon say 10. They therefore will have and they will have particular intermolecular forces and that determines their physical properties. So their melting point, boiling point, state, solubility, all of that's going to be. In. So all of the things that we did last year, we're going to now start to bring in when we talk about physical properties of our families. So some this is now sometimes where people have their aha moment um, to do with intermolecular forces. Um, and the last bit is the members of the families will all differ by CH2. So the SEC can ask you to define homologous series and you need to be able to vomit all of this back for them. Okay. So I think I am going to leave this here. You need to, for next Monday, it is unfortunate that we can't be in school. I will have a Molly Mod kit, but you need to go and get either two sizes of marshmallows or two sizes of jellies because you're going to have, ideally, the big marshmallow is going to be your carbons in your main chains and you're going to need to get some toothpicks or equivalent that we can stick into your marshmallows to put hydrogens on because you're going to see, can you figure out alkanes, formulas and whatever by using marshmallows or jellies whatever floats your boat so toothpicks so apologies to your parental units they're probably going where the fuck do we get toothpicks but two types of marshmallows and you can eat them as your reward on, and we'll use them on Monday we will need them again so don't throw away your toothpicks you may have to go for another stash of marshmallows alrighty um yeah so i don't know if you've ever seen chemistry cat before he makes good jokes so you get into all, all kinds of trouble so the the we're going to do four families in fuels 
and on Monday we're going to start with alkanes and then we move on to alkenes and then we move on to alkynes. Okay, so if you are happy, I don't know if homework is pinged. It is possibly about to. Um, and it is very simple. It is ticking a box to see. You need to learn your definitions for Monday. And it is ticking a box to see can you recognize hydrocarbons. So it is short and sweet. So if you are happy, I am also happy. You can be free. Thank you. Thank you.